Yes, good morning. You're very welcome to the All-Ireland Final Preview here and off the ball with thanks to Benetti Menswear, Ireland's leading menswear provider. Check out benetti.ie and uh, what a stellar panel we have for you. Hope you're watching with us on facebook.com forward slash off the ball on our, off, our, our YouTube page or indeed on Periscope as well. We have got men who have played in a total of 17 All-Ireland Finals, 18 if you include Sen and Connell's <laughs> under 14 All-Ireland <laughs> hurling final back in what, 89, Sen? We, it was, we were a, it was actually it? a football one. We were beating Right, Thanks so we've got uh, <laughs> Sen and Connell, we've got Lee Keegan from Mayo, we've got Tyrone, Sean Kavanagh, and from also Shea from Kerry. Lads, thanks a million for making the trip up to us today. Cheers. It's, uh, it's great to have you along with us. It's uh, it's quite the number. We were walking around, we were trying to tot up who had played and what. You were including replays, which obviously you played in one. Uh, Tomas, we were including the ones that you'd won and the ones that you'd lost, which, which totaled nine. And we were also talking about the fact that you stepped away in 2013 and then the following year watched Kerry beat Donegal in all Ireland final and maybe were there any regrets having stepped away? You're in that boat now, Sean. Yeah. Are there any regrets seeing how far the lads have gone and they are now 70 minutes away potentially from what would be a fourth all Ireland medal for you? There will be at five tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> there, 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 there's no getting away from that. And I'll be honest, I, I, had, I had made peace with it up until I, I met Art McCrory on, on Wednesday night at a, at, a, at a gig in the Moy, and he was kind of saying, oh, you know, you, you should have stayed. And, 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 and if you had stayed, you'd have been in there inside and causing bother like, like Big Comer did against Galway. And at that point, you start to ask, your, ask yourself the question. But no, I, I, th I think I had accepted I, I played longer than, than most uh, last year. And... Uh, no, I, 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 from, from a long way out this year, I, I, I knew the guys were going to be close. I didn't realise probably they were going to get to the final, but I, I knew they wouldn't be far away, and, and here we are now, but still the biggest challenge ahead. So I, I think everyone, everyone, including myself, are, knows that uh, it's, it's going to take a massive performance to turn it around tomorrow, so I may not regret it that much. Yeah, we'll get into the matchups. We'll get into the detail in and around the game and some of the side stories as we go on over the next three quarters of an hour or so. Lee, obviously, like Tomas retired, Sean is retired, Senan retired a little longer than the other two boys. You're not. You're sitting here because basically you've nowhere else to go this weekend. <laughs> you're going to be in Croke Park tomorrow. How tough a watch is that now? Because, I mean, pretty much you've been there at the business end of the season for the best part of the last seven or eight years. Yeah, I, th I suppose this week has been, uh, actually the last kind of couple of months have been different and unusual for myself and, and the group that we've had over the last number of years. As I said, we've been lucky to be there for five, six, seven years at the business end. So it's it's pretty much trying to fill a gap this week now and try and knuckle down at work and spend time at the club and not trying to think about it, you know, this week is, you know, it's one of the greatest times of your life in terms of your GA career. You know, you're prepping for the biggest game of your life. You're looking forward to it, the colour, the crack, everything that's around you. So, yeah, it's it's definitely a strange feeling. But I suppose I've been lucky enough that I've been very busy. And, you know, as a neutral supporter, I'm really looking forward to, f to, the, to the weekend itself. Uh, I think it's going to be a brilliant game. But, um, yeah, I have a lot of, I suppose I have a lot of fan memories, but a lot of, a lot of probably... Um, a lot of tough ones at the same time because we never actually crossed the line, which is very disappointing, and that's, that's something we have to live with. But um, I just still think we have a group there that can challenge again next year once once we get our, our house in order and our players back to full fitness and stuff like that. So, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a strange, uh, strange build up. But they, that's the nature of sport. You know, we can't can't guarantee it every year that we're going to be there. Um, Sport, sport's a funny thing and it goes around in full cycle so I'll, uh, I'll have to watch from the stands with a, with a bit of a sulk in my eye. Yeah, Lee's already been asked over the last few days about the Mayo managerial situation so I'm not going to bother getting into that now. We're going to spare you that but we won't, <laughs> we, we doesn't mean we can't ask the other lads about it. Senan, mm -hmm. it's Tyrone Dublin in the All-Ireland Final mm -hmm. and pretty much the entire week has been dominated by Mayo. They're not in this final. Why is that? What is this love-hate relationship that everybody outside of Mayo has with the county and its footballers? And it's great being a dub. It's just <laughs> deflecting away from everything. And Careful, just don't be saying so. The back reference to what Sean was saying, I still haven't made peace with the dubs rocking around with five all earns and seven. I just can't get over this and uh, fair play to you, Sean, because I find it the hardest thing going. Camera, <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Um, it's unbelievable when you, I'm looking at these fellas, five medals in seven years, and they're going for six and eight. And uh, being so close for us to get to a final and not getting there was one of the ultimate disappointments I think I had in my life. And I look at these lads and watch them on television playing and all our finals. And it's that jealousy, that jealousy factor is there. And it's still in me when I see mm. the lads running out, you know. Wh which of the years was it that, that, that hurt you the most? Oh, we'd, uh, we'd zero two. I think we had a great chance against our ma yeah. when our ma went on to win it. And uh, in zero five against Tyrone. You were uh, kind of outsiders in 05 though, weren't you? Yeah. 02 yeah. was a 50-50 game. Yes. That was the one that 
I mean, you, you lose by a point, and there's the, the Ray Cosgrove free off yeah, the post. Yeah, hit the and post. And, and, and Dave, you'll know it as well. And what the media do, because the media is based in Dublin, even our team, they just drove it to the roof. They were making us favours for games. And it was totally unjustified because we were coming from a base where we weren't good enough to beat the best teams. But we, we discovered a lot of new players. Mm -hmm. Anna Brogan came in, Barry Cal came in, you had Casey and these guys. And all of a sudden, we had we a new team. And we this is a Dublin team line. that hasn't won a Leinster title in seven years. Yes. <laughs> so we made favourites for every the, game. Yeah, the, the Leinster title was like an All Ireland for us. It was full house, there was glitz, there was glamour, there was razzmatazz going, going on with it. So we just couldn't get over the line against these lads or our ma. But I think that one really at half time and, and we'll get on to Mickey Hart in a while but we played the game isn't over at half time yeah the game that's it that's, <laughs> we were we were yeah, ahead you, you, were, you were maybe match. five or six five or six yeah, ahead yeah. I remember Desi yeah. in the change room saying look expect anything to happen here and we get we talk about the brilliance of Mickey Hart in a while I think there was nine changes at half time between personnel and moves so there was lads rocking out expecting mm -hmm. I remember talking to Collie Morris, and I, I, it was either me or Collie starting. Collie was marking Philip Jordan. Philip Jordan was nowhere near him in the second half. It's interesting at halftime in that game, like we we were more or less told just just cut loose, whatever yeah. you have to do. I, I went to half forward. Big Kieran was I was struggling with him in the air, and, and we brought Joe McMahon who was used so many times to put mm. out a fire, and, and, and he went on to Kieran and, and, and kind of roughed him up a little mm. bit, which suited Joe. But I went to half forward and sort of released me a little bit, and yeah. we we Every just cut we just cut up cut you loose. that day. And, and, I, think and that's what, I think that's what Tyrone has to do yeah. tomorrow almost, is it, to yeah. almost start in that mind frame and, and, and not let Dublin settle into yeah. the pattern because it suited us that day yeah. in the second half. And then Mulligan. <laughs> Those are Mulligan, those best. Ma that was magic, our, magic. Magic goal as well. And, uh, still, actually, my favourite memories of everyone. So. Still, <laughs> foul the ball. Foul the ball. Foul definitely the ball. did. Where? Two dummy solos. Changed hands. I changed hands. Definitely changed hands, definitely changed changed hands, hands. twice. Uh, the from a neutral, you've got to appreciate that goal. <laughs> yeah. 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 I wasn't <laughs> neutral. <laughs> I wasn't neutral on Hill 16 that day. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't. Yeah. And Dave, I still didn't answer anything about me because I don't have an answer on it. Were they in the media during the week talking about managers and manager stuff? I know. It's just you can't get away from it. You can't get away from it. It's all over in week. When we talk, Sean, or at the most, when we talk about weeks, or the ones that got away, Sean is obviously delighted that he's kind of doesn't never have to have a part in that kind of any conversation because he's got a 100% record in all Ireland finals. You're almost 50-50, but you are you're shading it. You're five and four. That 05 final, it was the second time in uh, three years that you'd run into Tyrone. It was the first time that you'd met them in the final. Like of of the ones that you lost, we're looking at 02, 05, 08, and 11. Which of them hurts the most? I know you don't really want to talk. You want to talk about the ones that mean the most, but that's less interesting. Um, look, I think they all hurt, you know, I suppose 0 05 and 0 08 more so, you know, I, I, we had great battles with that Tyrone team, um, you know, I suppose looking back on it, we never actually beat them when it counted, we beat them in, in Championship down in Killarney afterwards, but a lot of that Tyrone team had moved on, they weren't in the same place. Uh, everybody keeps telling me what brilliant matches they were. I haven't watched them back now, to be honest with you. But um, ever, no, none of them. Oh, never, no, no. I wouldn't watch. I haven't even watched matches that we. I don't really watch match old matches, you know. But have you watched um, any defeat that you're involved in? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Would you watch a win? I, I'd watch a win if it was on, but I wouldn't go looking to put it on. You know, I. I uh, but I certainly wouldn't go looking for a defeat. Uh, the only w way you would sp get stuff is if we were doing analysis that the management would have old clips of old games, possibly. But no. I mean, those games, look, they were outstanding. You look at that Tyrone team. I've said it numerous times. It, it was the best forward line that I ever played against. Um, you know, you look at the backs they had. You know, they had Gormley, Jordan, McMenamin. Um, uh, around midfield, obviously, Sean, Hub Hughes. And then the forward line it was just... Uh, I was speaking lately about it and I just said they just played off the cuff. You know, you couldn't set up in a certain way because they just play it any way you like. Mm -hmm. If whatever way you mark them, they could find a way around it. You know, you had Doher, McGuigan, Muggsy, Stephen O'Neill, phenomenal, Canavan. Like I mean, an inside forward of line of Mulligan, O'Neill and Canavan is unheard yeah. of. And we did, we actually, we had a very good forward line ourselves, an exceptional forward line. And the backs and forwards games or the, the internal matches we had were phenomenal as well. They'd be beating the living daylights out of each other and in that regard but I would still say that they were the toughest forward line to, 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 to play against you know and they just had a hard edge about them constantly um, it, it's not that we, we went into games think we all belie always believed we won was never an arrogance there we always believed that we could win it but the Tyrone no matter what way they were playing throughout the season they just had this ability to lift it for Kerry again lift it above everything that we had seen in the semi-final or in Ulster 
they had just that they had that ability. They had um, they had an unbelievable manager. Mickey Hart it, it w was just phenomenal. They always threw something different. I remember we had Tommy Welch and Kieran Donny inside. They were calling them Twin Tower Threat, and the McMahon brothers who hadn't you know. And you see Hamsey the way he's been changing throughout the season this year. They just have like there's no way in Kerry that you would see a midfielder or a wing forward being put back as a defender. It just doesn't happen if you're a forward. Aidan <laughs> O'Shea. yeah. Like, something like that doesn't happen, like, um, down our way. Whereas uh, Tyrone constantly do it. You know, it's not just one position you have. You're a footballer and you need to play everywhere. And they threw them in and the ball didn't stick. I remember Jack O'Connor told me, Jack wasn't manager at the time. He sent me a text. He says, you'll do it this year because the ball will stick inside with Donaghy and Tommy Welch. Um, but it didn't, you know, and, and they, they I, came I, around I it. always wondered why you didn't use Gooch and Declan and Sullivan more, because, yeah. I, I'll be honest, we were setting up, we knew Joe and Justy were there, but at the same time, we were afraid of the ball going through Gooch and, 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 and O'Sullivan, and, and we were kind of lucky in that regard that, that he's continued to, to fly the arrows into, into Donaghy and, and Walsh, and, and the brilliant players they were, but we were ready for that, and, and yeah. we, we had guys sweeping in front of them constantly, so... Like I think it's different. It's different. Like I wonder, like, the back then we were told, the way we were told to play football was to move it quickly, long if we could, right, yeah. and as quick as we could. Don't even take a play out of it if you had to. But I think with the twin threat inside there, possibly we thought maybe it worked against other teams, so we were pumping in longer ball than we, than we would. But I don't think it was we were told ever... I was the only fellow that would possibly out of the backs that used to carry the ball up the field if there was space there, and there used to be space there. But we weren't told, look, if it isn't working long, walk it through the lines, go through the lines. And like, as you said, you, Declan Sullivan was the best ball carrier that you could get like. Yeah. And he was well used to, he used to play down in Division 3 and Division 4 in Kerry and he was used to carrying his club team. Mm -hmm. and he was used to getting battered every game because that's what he did, he'd go back and get the ball. But no, we can't get those games back now, I'm it's afraid. It's funny though, you're on about the Tyrone forwards. I compared the Dublin forwards kind of a similar matter mm -hmm. now is, you know, you're on about the threat of them, but like their work went alone, mm -hmm. like yourselves back then, you know, they had a hard edge about them and as a defender or trying to make a run or trying to come out of defence, you know you're in for an uncomfortable day for the full hour because like the pressure don't put on you in games like Tyrone did back to Kerry, it's just you, you know you're just gonna tire and at some stage there's gonna get gaps and gaps and that's that's ultimately what happened back plus then. Plus mm. the biggest thing is knowing how to set up against yeah. a, a team that has five threats or six threats because no disrespect to Monaghan, but you know you have to put out McManus, you know you have to put out maybe O'Connell cutting you from 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 deep. But with Dublin there, I, I know last year we in, in that infamous semi-final, we didn't know. I, I, I'll be honest, I, 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 had, I didn't really buy into the hype, and, and I didn't really know who Colo, Conal Callahan was. Mm. I knew who he was after, after 15 minutes, but <laughs> at, at the same time, when you see them up close and physical, you realise they're all able to, to, beat, to, to beat a man with the ball at, at high speed. They're all able to turn you over. Uh, the power, their energy... Um, you just can't look after one or two of them. No. There's two, so there's as a group, so were you caught by surprise that day? By oh, we were. Well, because you haven't played them in a championship since 2011. Dave, I 100% I believed that we were going to win that game comfortably, and so did everyone in that drone team. That, that, that come was a massive shock to us. If you look back at the, the scores we were running up last year, and, and, and that was probably the weakness of maybe Ulster, that we were beating every team by 15 or 20 points, and we'd only played Ulster opposition. We played our man mm. in the quarters. Um, we, 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 we saw the way we played as indestructible. We, we, we didn't think Dublin would, would be able to break that down. And that's where I have the respect for Jim Galvin because he found a way and, and he was, he was trialling that system. He did it against Monaghan in the quarterfinals. He obviously had, had, had predicted that he was going to run into us somewhere down the line and uh, he, he broke it. And, and, and he's a great uh, tactician as well, isn't he? Really uh, likes it's, he looks at teams. It's not one dimensional Dumbledo. They're, they're playing very much the opposition they're against so they're, they're looking at different methods of how to beat them down like we played them we were very much man to man we played like say, say man or tyrone they, they know how to break down that kind of defensive block as well so Dublin were just not a one-dimensional team like the world probably plans. exactly yeah, yeah, so. yeah. we've said it all along they're, they're multi they have been multi-dimensional yeah. all along and that's the thing about them they will shake it up and mix it but not this year i think we're seeing a very structured offensive unit in terms of how they're ferrying the ball forward and their lines of running are very clever the support lines of running are very clever is that not because every team they've played Sets have up. set up the yes, same way? Yes, absolutely. So they now and have a They're critique. expecting that again tomorrow. Yes. They haven't faced a Mayo mm. or a Kerry that are likely to go a little more orthodox than maybe Tyrone or... I don't think Dublin can do that anymore, though. I, I, I don't think they can go the gun hole like they did in 13 or maybe 15. I think they're very much... 
more kind of slower in their approach and more kind of, I think they're more it's precise. Methodical. What they're doing methodical. Methodical. Yeah, I think they're very more precise. Uh, at times we give out how slow they are and hold the ball, but then they pick their line of running and it's mm. explosive. So I think they become more, much more smart as a team. Mm. I know instead of rambling up and down for 70 minutes of a game, they have to be more patient and more, more I suppose, just more yeah, patient overall side, but th their scores come at critical times in games. And if you look at their stats, I think yeah. they have serious stats in terms of their scoring percentages. It's huge. Like in Galway, against Galway, the nine, I think they had nine of the first 12 shots. Yeah, in the first they scored half, one so nine for so the first that's, 12. That's, that's, that's crazy. No shots from outside yeah. the 45 yeah. metre line. When we hear Sean Senna talking about maybe as a group, as a collective, they were caught by a little by surprise mm. because they hadn't faced Dublin outside of the league since 2011. So only Sean and his brother Colm had actually played mm. against Dublin in the championship. So they've had that 70 odd minutes of misery last year, semi final. They've had 70 odd minutes in Oma this mm. year. So there's no surprise now. They know exactly what they're getting from Dublin physically, tactically tomorrow. How big a difference is that for Tyrone? Yeah, it's, uh, for me it's about the backroom, the backroom team that Mickey Hart has now because what the backroom team will do will go through data ad nauseum to find weaknesses. And if Tyrone are going to win in All-Ireland uh, this weekend, they're going to have to find that weakness in that Dublin defence somewhere. And that's the, that's the test for Mickey Hart. They have that in the locker room now, that game in, that game in Oma. And a lot of people have referenced this during the week. Um, that that last 10 minutes when Tyrone went front foot advanced into Dublin's face and put real pressure on Stevens, Cluxon's kick outs they had a lot of success I think they won 4 and 5 they got it back to 2 points Ron O'Neill had the chance for a point mm. to bring it to 1 then all of a sudden that's a different kick out for Stephen Cluxton and I suppose that's the oxygen that's going to keep them going for the last 2 or 3 weeks that maybe they've found a way maybe Mickey Hart has sort of found a way from playing against Dublin in Oma now bigger pitch maybe we know the, the sky cameras were the problem as, as we've all heard the, the, yeah. the pitches had to be brought in by 2 metres on each side but they all down to sky wasn't yeah, it was all their fault yeah, yeah. Um, not to do with the man in charge <laughs> yeah, yeah but they would have they would have learned so much on Look, look, it's the, like we'll get into the matchups obviously but the, the penetrative force that is Jack McCaffrey was, was gone after against Mayo last year in that mm. all in the final when he was gone that was a different game altogether um, and against Mayo the, when Lee played against him last year the inside forward line uh, you had O'Gara in there wouldn't have the greatest pace Dean Rock wouldn't be the fastest either and you Paddy Andrews it was a different dynamic half time Jim Gavin makes the change Puts, puts Manning and McMenamin there, you're looking at a different game altogether. And I suppose the brilliance of Dublin is that they're not, they won't be surprised with whatever Mickey Hart throws at them tomorrow um, because they find a way. If they're, if they're posed with a riddle, they'll get through that riddle mm. on the pitch. They won't look to Jim Gavin, and that's the brilliance of the team, I Ma suppose. Mickey has to push tomorrow. Mm. The reality is that everyone in Tyrone doesn't want to see an hour, another horror show like the semi-final last year, so... When no, though, Sean? When does he push? When does he hit the button? I, th I think he has like to it go was early. Like 60, because 60, if, 62 if you, minutes in Oma. If you never happened last year. Does he? Is it the 50 minute mark? Is it the I 10? Don't, I don't think so, Dave. I think he has to go from the off because if you let Dublin get three, Same four man. points on you, they, they will comfortably sit in the sit in the shape and pick you off, Scully and, and Hard, and these runners will pick you off on the on on, on the counter. So, Tyrone knows how dangerous a team is. Whenever you get that three or four point lead, we had so many battles with the likes of Jim McGuinness's Donny Gall over the years, where they got ahead of you early and, and they they wet mm. or they, they waited for you to overcommit and then they okay, cut so you every time. So describe to me to what that them. describe to me what what Tyrone pushing from the start looks like. They have to try. Like what does that mean? In in column, they, they, may leave, they may leave Colin back, but everyone else will have to push to the nearest man. And, and Dublin will may, will probably have Keanu Sullivan back sweeping, and, and Tyrone will have Colin back sweeping, but. A, Apart from that, everyone should have to go to a man and be accountable so for you're that talking man. Five and Tyrone forwards and six Tyrone five, and five and six. Yeah, either and side. And the same at the other side. Either I side. Think, uh, not been smart. I think you take the mantra, maybe what we did to an degree over the last couple of years. You have to, and it's high risk, it. but there, there is quite a bit of reward mm -hmm. out of it. Now, physically, you guys were able for Dublin it. all over the well, field. I, I, think Tyrone, Tyrone, I think Tyrone. I think Tyrone. We're not far. Yeah, we're not far. We're in the peak fitness of the career. I think it's it's definitely sustainable. But my biggest worry for that is the bench, maybe with 20 to go or so. But I think maybe take a bit of our approach and mantra over the last couple of years. When we went toe-to-toe -to -toe at Dublin, now obviously we came up short out for me, but you know, we went toe-to-toe -to -toe for a full 70 and mm. nearly paid off because we, we had you to take high risk. You had. And this is the difference between Tyrone and Mayo. When you go front foot and advance and in your face and boiler going forward on Stephen Cluxon's kick out, you had three men across the middle that were over six foot four. So you Parsons and the two yeah. O'Shea's. And I don't think Tyrone have that. So they just set up that block with everybody in front for quite advanced. That long kick out, you made hay early on on Stephen's game. I don't think Tyrone would have that one there, Sean. So that little caveat on Cluck, if he's so yeah. fast and getting the long kick out away, yeah. your guys were set up in a wall 
And if you remember, Jason Sherlock had to go into Stephen Cluxon's helmet to go short after so. 10 or 15 J- Jason minutes. was there like a 16 man, we didn't know if he was playing or <laughs> <laughs> he was coming on. So I think the ball is actually going to him at some stage and someone gave him a shoulder and said, get, get off. So. <laughs> like that, I'd say, yeah. So <laughs> I assume, Colm, yeah, uh, look, we don't need you to go into conversations you've had privately with your brother this week, but it reminds me of on our All Ireland final day in Sky when Ollie's there in the studio and we're <laughs> trying to get something out of him. What has what <laughs> Joe been saying during the week? <laughs> yeah. We're in the same boat here with Sean. I but look, it, I, I, like I, I, I live three metres from Colin and I was talking to him every day this week, but I, I genuinely don't talk to him about how they're going to play and, and set up. If, but does he mark Fenton on kickouts? And then head back, or is he, he back to. there at the entire game? I, 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 I think pushes up for kick as well, is it? I, I think yeah. you'll, ha- you'll have to, Dave, because um, there's no one else that, that has the aerial ability in that drone team that Colum has. And, and Fenton, if, if, if Matty Donnelly or, or maybe even a Potty Hampshire is there, um, Fenton will field five or six balls tomorrow and, and will set the platform. We, we saw in the second half against Galway in the semi final, whenever Dublin pushed on Galway, they had a field day and they dominated possession and they, that was a platform for, for, for so many scores. So I think Dublin will do that in Tyrone tomorrow. They will try and push from the start as well. And, and we could have an intriguing game where, where two teams are really going at and, 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 and fighting for, mm-hmm. for tooth and nail for that first five, ten minutes to get, get a few scores on the board. And, you know, that, that, that could be where the game's won and lost because there's going to be gaps at the back and, and there, yeah, could be, yeah. there could be goal opportunities very early on. But it's, I think it's, it's people say the goalies that they get X amount of kickouts where there's no pressure on them and all that, and that is true. But there's going to, Morgan is going to have about 10, 11 kickouts tomorrow where the dubs are going to be set and he's going to have to find his man. And I think Cluxon would probably have the same. I think that is f- vital. I think if you can get on top there, I, I, I trust Cluxon more. I think if you go after Morgan, sometimes he sometimes can, can be thrown mm-hmm. off his, his game a small bit. Uh, can he not just go down the middle then, though? What? Can he not go down the middle in those situations? That's what he should do. But sometimes they t- take risks. You know, all the top goalies now, Lavelle is the same. Dublin went after Lavelle and they, they kind of cracked him. I'm not saying... I, if, if we were always told, and it was a different era, no doubt about that, the go to ball for us was to kick it down the middle. At least then you could get fellas under it. You know, and there was a, it was a break ball and you'd still be set properly. Mm. But I think another thing, look, it's strange that a team that have played, like outside, we played Cork in, in Munster Championship and we played them in an All Ireland final after. It's strange that the fact that Tyrone are in Ulster and Dublin are in Leinster and they're actually playing each other for the second time in a row. One thing I'd, I'd take out of the OMA. Uh, game was and it was uh, it was the best performance I've seen from from six forwards and Tyrone you got McNamee you've got McKernan you have um, McCann Burns um, these attacking players Hamsey coming from the back you'll, you'll have uh, Donnelly back there as well they're unbelievable at coming up the field they have great runners they're intelligent they know when to give it they know when not but the the performance that Dublin forwards gave that night to Conor Callan Mannion uh, Kilkenny um, Rock they absolutely got down in the gutter and they gave the best performance of tackling and I think they will focus in on that as well so if Tyrone don't push up and that is what they're basing their game on. I think it's a risky, it's a risky thing with, with for Mickey Hart. I think he has to push up more. And if he has, I would argue. I don't know would Lee agree with me. I would argue that this Tyrone team have possibly better forwards than that Mayo team had. That could actually hurt Dublin more if they were pushed up the field. Um, I think the big thing will be possession around the middle of the field because if you're pushing up man to man, which I think Dublin will do, I think it will come down to the possessions around the middle and of the park. Just on the kick so we watched we watched the Manning and Tyrone game, and you know we've seen a huge change in Mickey's tactics to you know push up. My only concern was they did create three goal chances from Beggins' kickouts, mm. and you know Beggins at Clucks and you know I think Clucks is getting actually better <laughs> if that's possible. Yeah. But Began went long, he went short, and he really caused Tyrone a lot of headaches, particularly in the first half. So I think, although I did love the approach to them, I suppose, pushing up, they need to be very smart on how to do it. Um, I think they got caught maybe go, or the wrong side a couple of times, where Began was able to put over the, the right side or left side and into, into a lot of space. So I think with Clucks in, he, he'd be watching them videos and thinking I can get the same joy as, mm-hmm. as Began did in the semi-final. So I think, yes, Tyrone need to take a lot of risks, but just be, be very smart on how to do it. The, fe- uh, the fear I has uh, is that Tyrone probably aren't all that used to pushing up against the big teams See, like a a Dublin new, or a Mayo yeah, or a Kerry. Yeah. So, it, 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 it's we, whilst we did against Monaghan... Were you expecting Mo- that shot against Monaghan? Like yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. Because, because I, I, I know I, I know the Throne guys would back themselves against Monaghan, no disrespect to Monaghan, but Throne 
felt as if they'd better players, and and and, and, and that would have been the same down through the year. Mm. So like Tyrone would have no problem saying, right, we'll take you on 15 to 15, and and we'll come out on top here. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Dublin's different. Yeah. Dublin's different. You, you yeah. know, you're you're pushing up against a different animal. Yeah. They have five forwards it's, that yeah. that if you give them a sniff, they'll put the ball in the back of net, and the game could be gone. Yeah. In, for in me, 10, that's 10 the key. Minutes. Like we we're, we are here with uh, four of Benetti's style icons, and as you can see. We are clad in the finest that Benetti has to offer this afternoon for, for more. Go to Benetti.ie. Uh, um, we're here in the off the ball. It's the All-Ireland Final Preview. Tomas O'Shea, Lee Keegan, Sean Cavanagh and Sen and Connell. All week, all over the last fortnight, Tomas, we have heard guys tr talking about how Toronto are going to set up against Dublin. This is the first panel I have heard put forward the notion that Toronto are going to go man for man, push up, turn this game into a Mayo-Dublin type All-Ireland Final. As somebody who's lucky enough to be working at the final tomorrow, I'm praying that you guys are right. But if you're Jim Gavin, are you not thinking, if there's a list of things that you would love Mickey Hart to do in terms of setting this Toronto team up tomorrow, is that not top of your list? Go after us, think in your minds you can beat us man for man and take us on. I think the dogs would be delighted if they did. I, I, I don't, I'm not sure it's going to pan out like that. I, I, I think it'll be a kind of a mix of it. I think yeah. that Tyrone will be hoping that whatever way they come out, if they push up like they did against Monaghan for 70 minutes, I'm not sure will they be there in the last 10. I think Tyrone, whatever way they'll play, will try to be in that game for the last 10 minutes. Um, but it, it's, look, I, I think no matter what way Tyrone set up, if they go completely defensive, if they mix it up, if they push it up, I think Dublin have the answer to every question that they pose. Like, you know, I, I do genuinely think that. Um, I think this is a fierce young Tyrone team. I think they'll be on the block for a few years. Mm -hmm. um, w is it their time this year? You know, they've done phenomenally. I've no doubt that Tyrone deserves to be there. I don't have no doubt that they were the second best. Are the the two top teams in the country are in the final? But I do think it might be a, a, a step too far for them at this stage. In, in their progress. I mean, if you look at the OMA game, and we, we have that game to look at, and I, I think it's different because Crow Park is always a different setup as well, anyway. But the key guys for, for Tyrone, Sludden, Merchant was put on Sludden that night, and Sludden was key. And Sludden is, in fairness to me, is after stepping up again since that game. Um, Hart was marked by John Small. They, they took out key guys that Tyrone had. Uh, Cullum has played outstandingly well, is going for player of the year possibly. He was taken off towards the end of that game. I think like, we had a saying in Kerry, you hammer the hammer, you hammer the key guy. Sean said it there about Conor McManus with, with Monaghan. The problem with, 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 with Dublin, if they've, they've sledgehammers all over the field, like how, how would you take out the, those yeah, key guys? Everywhere, you know? yeah. 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 Look, that's the, the, thing I, the thing I would like to see, and, and, this would, mm. and, and I don't know what's going to happen, but I, I'd love to see Mickey throw a few cur curveballs tomorrow. I'd, yeah, I'd, 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 I'd love to see Colin go to Edge of Square, go, yeah. to, go to 14 and say, right, for the first 10 minutes, we're going to bombard your full back line yeah. with a long high ball here, and let's see how you cope with it. Uh, because to me, Jim Galvin is methodical and, and mm. military about everything, and I'm sure he, he's considered these things, mm. but everything is risk and and. and and with him, he, he'll know the, the percentage probability that Mickey's going to play a certain way. I would love him to put Colm and Pity Hart inside mm -hmm. and say, you know what, John Small, if you want to foul Pity Hart, mm -hmm. you're fouling him in a scoring mm -hmm. zone. Because Pity, Pity want to play there in an awful lot of training matches. So and put it to you very then effective in there. If he was to do that, for example, I mean, Colm Cavanagh's main job, because he's so close to goal, is to prevent a goal being Colin, scored. Colin, Colin, Colin was top scorer in the, whatever it was, 2004. Oh, I understand that. But, uh, he, he but if Dublin score a goal home. in that 10-minute spell that he's on the edge of the square, That's and Tyrone lose the All-Ireland, all of the blame is on Mickey Hart's shoulders. That's the risk. Oh, that's, that's 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 the risk. risk. Yeah, and it has to, to be done. He's done, it, he's done it the right way. He, ha he has to bring Dublin to new territory tomorrow. And it has to be something different. So we put all these ingredients in, in, into the mix. All of a sudden now, what we're saying, put it together, they're going to advance front foot, manic intensity early on. With a couple of lads on the edge of the square, they can actually score. And Peter Hart might get a bit of, he might get a bit of success in there. Two umpires behind him, he's turning around, you know, John Small can't get away with what he gets away with off the ball. I'm not saying it is within the rules, but it's on the edge. All those little bits and pieces come together. Now we have a game, and he's, it's that risk-reward, and that's going to be key mm. tomorrow. Is it possible, though, Senator, to catch out a manager nowadays? Like, if we're talking about Colm playing on the edge of the square for the first 10 minutes tomorrow, there's absolutely no doubt that has cropped up in a meeting between the Dublin manager and his selectors this week. Every, every eventuality has been covered. As I said, if you've gone through data ad nauseum to see what... Uh, what's going on? They've gone through the subplots, all these little subplots. They've, they, they've all been... The, the answer's there. And then the players, the clever players in the pitch will actually figure it out. When they're posed with a riddle, they'll figure it out themselves anyway. Um, and if we can, if we can get on to the matchups there, and this will probably dictate 
the team that Dublin are going to start with as well. Like, does Morchin mark Sludden? I don't know can Sludden play inside, uh, Colm, you can tell me, but does Sludden bring him to the part of the pitch where he doesn't want to go? Morchin is an excellent... He's in the, in the yeah. semi-final. Yeah. He's, yeah. Not a, he's my club. He's yeah. not an inside defender. He's a middle tour class act. You bring him to new territory, all of a sudden he's under a bit of pressure there. So does Sludden go inside and will Callisey come out for a while? Do, you know, does Peter Hart just... Uh, for me, does he go right back into defence? John Small doesn't mean want him in the forward line, and Dublin don't want John Small in the forward line. I think he's, he's too Peter good. Peter Hurt. Yeah, well, John Small yeah. would love that all day. Like, that's playing into Dublin's hands. Is Murphy definitely that's starting for you? Well, it's, it's more sure for Simon, so there's a massive call to be made there. For Simon has been electric, I think, in all our mm. finals, and has a lot going for him. Match last year against us. So. Yeah. Maybe for Simon comes on as soon as. Lee Brennan comes on. You said it, yeah, yeah. That was my. I'm not sure if that if that's what the way that Jim Gavin would be looking. Um, Tomas, you were going to come in there. No, I was just going to say I was I was thinking back. You know, if if you're a defender and you don't, I never wanted to be brought into the full back line. I hated it. You know, I I couldn't. I didn't have that man marking capability in me to do it. And I remember we played um, Armagh. You see, if Tyrone uh, push up, then you will have the one-on-one -on -one situations where you can drag Dublin defenders maybe where you don't want them to go. I remember the 2002 final, Oshie McConville, I, I had him out wing forward in the first half and we were in control of that game in the first half. And in the second half, he was queued out and it was kind of, you talk about management now and they have to be on the ball. That time, wherever your man went, you followed him in the story and I was brought into the full forward line. Oshie got man in the match at the end of the day and um, Armagh won. He was key in that goal and everything that happened after. But I think it is... If Tyrone sit back, the Dubs will find that harder to do. You know, I, 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 I really think that, um, you know, if the more one-on-one -on -one situations that are there, the more I can see Dublin pushing on. It turns know? it into a shootout, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Uh, but who I wins mean, the shootout? Well, look, McGeary <laughs> and Brown. Well, like as well. But it's they have harder. to do that because yeah. Tyrone can't go home on, on Monday yeah, having yes. played the same well, way I, we did. I, I understand, understand that. But you, they cannot do that. you look at the semi-final, yeah. the, the, and I'm not a huge man for stats, but they, they, they do jump out at you. They, they, how clinical the dubs are with their forward line. They're all saying they don't. I'm not sure they're told, don't shoot unless you're 100%. I don't think that's the case. But I think it's it's individually on the field. If it's on, they'll take it. And if it's not, they won't. Well, they, don't, and they don't roll the dice because they no, don't want to give oxygen to the opposition. 78% yes. they shot against Galway. And, the, and Tyrone had 10 <laughs> wides. Now, I admit, on another day in the first 10 minutes against Monaghan, they could have gone over. A lot of the scores could have gone over. Six drop shot, 10 went wide. That's 16. That's over half of your total But they're shooting shot. from yeah, very different teams. positions. That could happen. I mean, that, that's, that's what, the thing. That's that if, if that happens that's, on Sunday... That's, if, been, that's been our problem probably for five or six years. And, and, and anyone in Tyrone who's watched this in the last four or five years, our, our, our conversion rate is probably 40, 45%. But what killed you what? against them in 2016? Yeah. Completely, yeah. And, and, last and, and it's, it's killed us time and time again, even, even against last Kerry. In 15, in the semi-final, we had, we had two or three goal chances that we butchered. And, and, and ultimately, that's the winner losing of those yeah. big games. So... Thrones conversion rate tomorrow has to be better. Now, the style of play, whenever you're, you're dropping 14 men behind the ball and you're running it out of your own defence, you're always going to be tired by the, by, the, by the end product anyway. So naturally, if you're playing like that, your forwards are tired. By the time that, that, that shot gets away, you know, you're shooting on, under pressure and with, 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 with leggy legs. So I, I think tomorrow, that's, Tyrone are going to have to keep more men off the pitch. I think they have to keep three or four there, and, and they're going to have to gamble. And and, 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 and said it, and that's still things well. Yeah. And you know, it's only a small little factor, but this Tyrone's first final in ten years, so a lot of them guys are going to be quite nervous going in. Mm. You know, thinking, you know, like, do I take the shot on early? If it goes wide, then how's my head? So that could be a little small factor as well, where Dublin will have all the experience. You know, if they take a shot, they get out the next play. So little, little factors like that could be huge tomorrow. If like like Conor McAlsey hits his first three tomorrow, he's gone. He could be hitting four or five points. You know, uh, Mark Bally didn't start. He hits his first couple of scores. They need to get them first scores early to give themselves a bit of confidence because it is it's a huge occasion. Like the likes of Cullum, I was huge from tomorrow with his experience back in 08 there. So he needs to be passing on as much advice during the week, which he probably has already. So you know, having them little factors as well is key. So like. For Tyrone, we're on about their scoring stats. They could shoot the lights out tomorrow for all we know. Joe, yeah. They could be building for this game. Well, I said they're creating chances. I don't think the chances yeah, are probably. Yeah, they're creating the chances, chances Joe. And, and you know what? Galway had chances in the semi-final yeah. against Dublin. Galway could have right. easily got in Three four goals. or five points up in that first half. Yeah. And, OK, Dublin went after them in the second half. But as well. if, if Tyrone get the chances that Galway got and, and Tyrone do catch a bit of fire... It is believable that Tyrone could mm -hmm. go in three or four yeah. points up at the break tomorrow, and that would that would be serious for an All Ireland. Is fan. the experience yeah. a big deal, Tomas? Because if you think about it, it's probably the most inexperienced team that Dublin have played in an All Ireland final since they played Tyrone in 1995. But on the strength of what happened in 2003, none of them had played in an All Ireland final. Bar was it P Peter and one other maybe, Pascal? Yeah. 
Is that a two possibly in that team? So Tyrone turned up in the 03 All-Ireland final with pretty much no pedigree at senior level, but they'd all won All-Irelands at the minor and under 21, and there is a huge portion of this team tomorrow that have done the same. How important is that? Well, I think you can look at it from both ways. I mean, you, you look at, at Dublin. Dublin, don't panic. They don't, I think that comes over experience. I mean, we had it over Dublin up until 2011 where we backed ourselves every single time. If it went to the wire, and we'd speak about this in the dress room, if it was going to the wire in the last 10 minutes that we'd back ourselves to do the right thing, and it's about the simple little basic things to get right, and if you get an opportunity to take it. But, I mean, you look at Limerick Hurlers this year. The one thing that teams who have apparently are new on the block and, and coming in with no huge experience. The one thing that's a common denominator, you talk about Donegal, they have a ferocious hunger. They, they don't fear. They're working so hard, so quick, that they're actually um, playing beyond themselves and above themselves. Tyrone will have to do that again on Sunday if they are to win it. But I, do, I don't think it'll come down to it. I think it's a belief. I think Mickey Hart, obviously, I wouldn't be on the inside. Sean would know more about this. But I would say Mickey Hart has an unbelievable ability to get inside players and in, inside the groups individually and as a group into their heads and make them believe that this is possible because I would say in 2003, 2005 and 2008, Tyrone Raw was underdogs against us. I don't know why, especially in 2008, but it was throughout the season. They have this ability to step it up. Now, if this team has the ability to step it up, it'll be phenomenal. But another thing, Dave, I, I, you know, you talk about Tyrone throwing curveballs. I think Dubs like Carmen mm. Costello is on fire, yeah. Yeah. and I would certainly look at starting him. Like I mean, you talk, and Scully was the fall guy in the final last year as well, where he had played all the way up, and then he was dropped for the final. But Paul Flynn, I think, is playing outstandingly well. You have um, Kevin McManaman is on the bench. You have Scully. You have Owen O'Gara. O'Gara it's not going to hurt his bench if he mm. starts. Um, O'Gara is probably Costello. the one that, yeah. that frightens me because. If Dublin do go and push, or Tyrone do go and push, it's going to leave gaps, and there's going to be maybe there, there'll be times Column isn't mm -hmm. protecting that day, and if O'Gara's in there as a ball winner, strong, with strong. the guys peeling off him with Mannion and, and, and the guys flying off him at speed, and it's that could be dangerous. At, Sean, they, Dublin have used that, and they hadn't before. They've actually used it to the national league, and they've only they've tapped in and out of it. It's like something they have in their locker there, if needs be. They're going to put him inside. And if Kieran Kilkenny needs to go inside because he's been hounded, that'll happen as well. And you'll tend to find if, if Colm's not getting back that ball, will be in on top of Kieran Kilkenny, mm -hmm. a prolific underage scorer. That'll be their answer to what Lee did to Kieran Kilkenny last year. And all these little bits come together. But uh, we, we, we talk about Mickey Hart, and one thing Peter said when we were doing a few bits during the week is that Mickey comes into his own when it comes to an all Ireland final. And I think that's what frightens me a little bit as well. He sort of brings the players to a new level, and, and you know the, that yourself. The you know. guys will be going tomorrow 100% convinced they're taking Sam home, and, that, and that's, mm. that's a reality. He, he, like, he has an amazing ability, and, and, and he believes that himself, and it, it just, it just trans, transfers to the players. One thing Tomas mentioned there about, about the Limerick, and I heard that the Limerick guys, they travelled up the morning of the match, and I know this is brought up every year, but... It's a massive thing, the Dublin guys getting to settle in their own beds tonight, yeah. in their own surrounds, because as a young Tyrone team come on, you know, they will be um, a, little bit, a little bit weary tonight of, of maybe not sleeping and, and not settling properly and, and maybe a bit a jittery going into the game. Yeah, for the Dublin, it's a day. It's nearly a full week. They leave their house today, Sean, yeah? Oh, yeah, they're, 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 they're away this morning. They're away so, this morning. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 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 It's a long day. Thing about you also. Um, get your questions in over the next few minutes. We'll be uh, getting into the predictions for the lads uh, very shortly as to how they think this final is going to go tomorrow. Uh, we're going to pick the best comment as well. So uh, if you've been sending them in on Facebook and uh, YouTube and Periscope over the last little while on Twitter as well, uh, you could be in with an opportunity of uh, winning a makeover by Benetti worth 400 euros. So we're into the last few minutes of our All Ireland final preview with Benetti here uh, this afternoon. You're, you guys are done. You guys have got enough. They've been good <laughs> enough to you boys already. But uh, do get your, your questions into us over the next uh, few minutes as we uh, look towards wrapping things up. Um, before we get predictions, lads, it's an interesting one, and you've kind of mentioned a uh, Costello-type curveball there, Senan. All we've talked about for the last fortnight is what is Mickey Hart going to do? All of it's based on the assumption that Dublin will just probably start with the same 15. People really feel maybe the only selection issue is Fitzsimons versus Merchant. They'll play exactly as they played in every game this summer. Is that going to happen, Lee? Are Dublin just going to set up as we've seen them? Are, are they entirely predictable, albeit clinical and efficient and brilliant? Are they entirely predictable now? Um, to a degree, I think, yes. Um, 
I think Mickey, being the man he is, I, I don't think he's going to... He'll obviously done enough homework in Dublin to realise what he has to do, what his players have to do, but I, I think I'll raise Mickey this week and the last week or two. I'd be more concerned about his own team and what they can bring to the game on Sunday. Um, I think the biggest problem with a lot of teams over the last couple of years is that we get so bogged down by what Dublin do and what Dublin bring and they have this and have that. I think it's important and something we did regularly was worry about what we can do control what we can do in the pitch and if it's good enough at the end of the day it's good enough and if we go for it we go for it and just don't believe in any regrets there, there on Sunday and I think that was the one thing probably last year Sean you probably agreed that you just probably felt that you just didn't bring enough did you? Yeah look well, I, I, I think you're, you're entirely right there that if Tyrone get bogged down on trying to stop all of Dublin's strengths you, you are beaten before you yeah. even start because Dublin have as much strength coming off that bench mo as much as they do in that forward unit that they're going to start yeah. tomorrow. So you, you you will completely destroy your own game plan if if you try and stop Dublin yeah. because Gavin will will flip 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 someone on after fifteen or twenty minutes that will completely disrupt what you're trying to achieve. So you, I I don't think Kevin Tyrone can do that. I and think I they have to work I out how they can get. 20 scores tomorrow mm, because yeah. you're not going to beat Dublin by defending and hoping that you're going to keep them to 11, 12, 13 scores. You have to score 15 to 20 points at the very least. So I think Tyrone, the onus on them tomorrow was trying to get that conversion rate up yeah. and trying to get the guys on the ball that they know will finish and, and, and if goal chances present themselves that they take them. And just for Dublin, I suppose, to begin, for uh, for Tyrone to have a chance, I suppose, you know, you're looking at guys like Fenton, who seems to be getting better every year. You know, we're on about he hasn't lost the game of championship. Uh, Kieran Kenny has been huge this year, and not in terms of possessions, but his score, and he scored something like 222, 221. Um, James McCarthy, Jack McCarthy in the semi final was electric. You know, we know he's going to bring tomorrow. So I think for, for Tyrone, a lot of these guys, he'd probably have maybe an 80% game, a 70% game, because at the end of it, if they don't, I, I think. I think Tyrone could be in trouble for, for, for the full 70 because these guys are, they don't tire. That's the mm -hmm. first thing. And we, we found out they just don't tire. They, 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 you know, they might make a mistake or two, but they get the next ball. They try and make another play. So in terms of that, I think... There's no the, panic button. There's no panic button. And we, we found that over the last five, six, seven years that we get a goal in the crew stage. You kind of look at the Dublin people or Dublin players and you say... They're just getting out the next play, yeah. and you're thinking to yourself, "What do we have to do here to kind of just you to know, break to, them, to bury them?" <laughs> you know, like so. And th th I think that's the biggest uh, asset that Jim Gavin has with his Dublin team at the moment is just that they're going to be coolness. If they're five points in with five to go, Dublin will not panic, and that's just that's the sign of a great team and what a manager brought to the brought their setup. But I'm really looking forward. To, I I do give Tyrone a chance tomorrow. I do think you know, reference Limerick. Um, I think if they come in with that ravenous attitude and the application that they can bring, and like Tyrone are a young team. They shouldn't fear Dublin. You know, th this group of players has played them, yes, but I think they should go with the confidence of believing that they're going to win All-Ireland tomorrow. And I, I agree with Sean that they, they should have that belief and just, just go for it. Just absolutely go for it. And don't be waking up Monday morning thinking, I had this left or I had that, or should I have taken that shot? Just just go out there and just go for it. Because, it, you know, look at Limerick brought home by just pure appetite. You know, and it, it, it's, it'll be the sweetest journey of all of to do it. OK, so before we get predictions, are, are we all in agreement that if Tyrone sit back like they did for the first 62 minutes in Oma, that they have no chance of winning the game. Are any of the four of you in d disagreement with that? I agree with that. For me, that's no, chance no chance. That they win the All-Ireland if they Dublin are the one team that, that, that forced came up. They know how to dismantle a blanket defence and they can immobilise a sweeper as well. Full stop. That's okay. nothing to them. That is their bread and butter now. Right, so let's start with you, Lee. And this is all in the assumption that Toronto are going to be a little more... Um, attacking orientated and maybe for more men further up the field for longer in the game than we've seen in previous years and then we saw in Oman that uh, Super Ace game. So we're going to base predictions on that assumption. I what is your prediction for the game? How does it go? Um, well, I'm hoping that's the way it goes tomorrow from a neutral perspective, to be honest. Uh, I think that's the game we're all waiting for and the game, I think the game that football needs. Um, I'm kind of tired of talking about Hurling and what Hurling brought. Football needs a, a huge, huge game and it's had a couple over the years. So Based on that assumption, I do think Tyrone will be into the game for 10, 12 minutes ago, but I just think Dublin's bench, I just think, you know, we've experienced it over the, the last two All-Irelands, what they brought, they've multiple all stars, player of the year has come off the bench from their forwards, and whether Cormac Costello starts or not, I think he's going to have a huge contribution to how the game goes. So uh, for me, it's probably Dublin by four or five. Okay. Based on that. Seven. I think they have to, Tyrone just have to go that way, because if Dublin get ahead and if, if they get a goal, they just don't relinquish a lead. They know to inject pace or take the pace out of a game, it's, it's, it's what they're best at. Tyrone have to pose them with problems, and what Dublin are great at, you hit us with problems and we'll, we'll, solve, we'll solve that, so that's an issue for them. Um, I think the brilliance of Dublin is their, their clarity of thought down the home straight. They execute all the big plays in the big moments. Mm. Ice in the veins. You know, in an all in final. And that's what they have that I just don't think Tyrone have yet. And they are going to have, I think, over the, over the next couple of years. So for me, when you throw all those bits in the mix and you have your game changers, 
itching to get onto, onto that park when Tyrone maybe are waning, because there's going to be a lot of attrition, I think, Sean, as well. And, and, and we could show in the mix, physically, Tyrone are in excellent condition. Peter Donnelly has done some job. It looks like Michael McCarron is only young for it. These muscles popping out everywhere on him, you know, for a little 20 year old corner back. Um, they are going to be up for the, the attritional battle. But I think with the bench Dublin have, when, when, when Jim looks over the shoulder and going down the home straight, and if Dublin are ahead, as Lee will know, they will just see it out. I hope it's not a point game, one point game where, Don't tell me that. you know, <laughs> yeah, where Dublin are keep playing keep ball. You know, I hope it's one where the other either Tyrone are ahead, going down the home straight, and Dublin have to attack or else Dublin are, uh, Dublin are, you know, a couple of points ahead and maybe still going for to yeah. see it out. Sean, there's no getting away. Logic, rational thinking, all says Dublin. Like stats, everything dictates that. There's a big bot coming here. Yeah, but I I know these drone players. Mm -hmm. I, I know the character that they have. I know Kieran McGeary. I know Connor Myler. I think I've seen these guys grow. Those guys are going to relish getting on that pitch tomorrow and, and just t turn strips off Dublin, trying to tear strips mm -hmm. off them. They're going to have to go and play a bit like Lee at times on the edge completely. And and look, the referee could dictate a few a few decisions here or there, which which could switch, could tip the ballast tom tomorrow. But a throne do that, and, and they do manage to get Peter Hart and, and Matty Donnelly free and, 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 and get, get at Dublin and take goal chances, they can be in this game. I, I, I believe Tyrone have to either lose this game tomorrow by seven or eight or nine points by having a cut at it and, and going for goal and, and taking huge risk or win by a point or two. And, and that's, that's what the way I see this game going. But losing by five or six, having not really gone after them, is you can't that's do it. the nightmare scenario. They cannot scenario. do it. They cannot go up the road. Nobody wins with, there. With, 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 okay. uh, the, the, these guys, and, and in Tyrone, we don't do the sympathetic defeat. Oh, you tried, you tried well. That, 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 that just won't cut it. Tyrone supporters yeah. want to have a go at Dublin. And, and if it means losing by 10, so be it. It's not okay. a game, so. Yeah. Tomas? Yeah, look, I suppose with Bradley picked, uh, with McCallisky in there, with Donnelly, I don't know, will Donnelly play inside or will he come back out the field? I suppose the fact we're talking or discussing will Mickey Hart push up is because of the first 20 minutes against Monaghan and what he did, and I don't, I don't think everybody was expecting him to do that. Um, but for me, I think it comes down, I, and I'm just trying to think of it here as, as the lads were talking, and Sean mentioned the ferocity that Tyrone will bring to it, which I no doubt they will. I think it will come down to the Dublin forwards. I think the ferocity that they will bring off the ball could be the difference. I think what they do off the ball and on the ball, I just think they have more firepower on the bench and on the field than Tyrone will have. Um, now, Tyrone have an ability to limit teams. I don't know what Dublin scored above no man. Was it 114? Like that is as low no, as yeah. they've, they've probably mm -hmm. scored all year. Uh, but I just think that the, the key will lie. I mean, there'll be so many aspects of the game we'll talk afterwards. But if that Dublin uh, forward line, the seven or eight fellas that are going to play tomorrow in the forward line, perform off the ball and on the ball, I cannot see them losing. I would say four or five points. Four or five points. So we've maybe three on one here, which is probably what we would have predicted before we sat down. Uh, it has been our off-the-ball All-Ireland final preview with Benetti Menswear Ireland's leading menswear provider. Check out Benetti.ie. Tomas O'Shea, Sean Cavanagh, Senan Connell and Lee Keegan have all been with us this afternoon. Our competition winner will be announced on all of our uh, social channels later. Thanks a million for watching us this morning and we will uh, wish you a very enjoyable All-Ireland football final weekend. Thanks for watching.